Okay, before we get started with this video, Happy New Year. Hope everyone's having a great 2024. A lot has been going down this year. Cat Williams literally exposing every entertainer in the industry. Steve Kerr having CTE as a head coach for the whole 2023 season. Jonathan Kuminga running around like he's Tupac asking for more minutes from Shams. Draymond Green being one of the best UFC fighters in the sport of basketball is another thing I didn't anticipate. And now we're here. So I want to lead this by saying I'm a Warriors fan. As you know, if you consume my content, I watch all teams in NBA, but I am a Warriors fan. And as I feared, Golden State has been very mid. They're not a tier one team. They are a bad basketball team and at times a good basketball team. The product has not been great. So let's start with the number one thing first, Draymond Green. He's been out a lot of games. I'm pretty sure he's only played 15 games on the season. We have not seen him a lot, and a lot of that is on him. He's had many moments where he's been hitting people, just doing things that just make no sense for whatever reason. And the fact that on his newest podcast, he talked about potentially retiring after signing a contract, it really makes me so frustrated that there's this media circus going on and on through and through with Draymond Green. But I also hate that there are fans that drag it that want to act like Draymond has not been having a very good season when he's actually suited up to play basketball. When he's been locked in, he's still been a great high impact player for the team. So I'm happy to see him back. But at the same time, he has to keep his emotions in check and not wild out. All the violent things that he's doing randomly, it's not basketball. And there's not really like a huge place for it in the NBA, but he also has to not come back soft to where he's not really applying pressure on the game. Just be relaxed and don't go completely out of pocket, Draymond. That would be great. But yeah, Draymond's missed a ton of games for this team. A lot of this has been the Chris Paul and Dario show off the bench, which my Lord, the way that they just have this great relationship. Listen, in 2024, find you a partner that looks at you the way Chris Paul looks at Dario Sarge, because they literally have a combination on the basketball floor where it's just no one else gets involved. It's Chris Paul, Dario. He's not maximizing. Kuminga, it's Dario. And it's literally that show the entire time. And it's the best two-man game in sports because literally they either dominate or against a switching defense where Chris Paul is asked to get to the rim, it doesn't work out. It's one or the other. And unfortunately, we no longer have that weapon at our disposal because Chris Paul is now injured and out four to six weeks, which is a bad thing on paper. But the fact that I have to find the silver lining in that now Moses Moody might see minutes, it's there, but I'm not happy to say this. Moses Moody, another basketball player on this team that actually gives us defense on the other end, can shoot the ball offensively, and has made pretty solid decisions, has been cut from the rotation several times this season. And the fact that GP2, when he came back, took all of Moses' minutes when they should still be able to play is kind of crazy. But the fact that GP got hurt and Moody was still cut from the rotation really makes you look at Steve Kerr and ask, are you really good at your job? Are you really good at coaching basketball? If those are the decisions that we're making on a night to night basis, it makes no sense. Steve Kerr this year has had many rotations that have not featured Kuminga or Moses Moody that have favored three to four guard lineups, specifically where he'll have Andrew Wiggins at the four and Dario at the five. And as I said earlier, shout out to Dario because he's been a very consistent offensive player. But my word, Dario at the five defensively is not good basketball. He gets picked at routinely and not having another player like, I don't know, Trace Jackson, who's finally getting his minutes doesn't really make much sense if you're trying to compete in basketball games when teams literally hunt Dario almost every time and in the third quarter which for many years if you watch Golden State basketball the third quarter has been some of their best basketball they've been bad in third quarters and bad in fourth quarters because they'll have these stretches where Dario is at the five sometimes Steph isn't in the game and they're terrible so I'm hoping that with the injuries that we have, with Draymond coming back, we're able to supplement the roster better to where Dario is able to see some support and we have better lineups that feature our young talent that can actually impact the game offensively. That would be great. The fact that we just played the Toronto Raptors, blowout loss, by the way, 
RJ Barrett has nearly 40 points. The Raptors are using their size and length to find easy shots on the interior. They're finding these Steph Curry mismatches and they're going at him offensively. And Klay Thompson for the entire game is carrying us. And the fact that Steve Kerr sees that, subs out Klay Thompson, subs out Steph Curry, who was abysmal. He was terrible in that game. But you sub out two of your main floor spacers. You bring in Corey Joseph. A Corey Joe. <laughs> oh my God, this shit. Yo, the, the amount of fundamental. <laughs> oh, fuck, bro. It was so I don't even care, bro. We got to talk about that. What just happened? In Toronto, what is this? It's a good pass. Oh guy? my God. Corey Joe's don't even <laughs> try to score. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? Uh, he didn't even look at the basket. We wind up losing the game by 20 plus. It's just a indictment on Kerr's coaching this year. It's been terrible. And the way that he's so quick to pull guys when they're hot, it's like he's betting money on the games. Like he's taking the Steph Curry under. He's taking the Klay Thompson under. Because why are you taking your best offensive players out when they're going on a very big stretch? The rhythm and the lack of rhythm that that creates for these players a lot of that is on Steve Kerr. But here's what's not on Steve Kerr. Stephen Curry is a great basketball player. I acknowledge that the situation he's in right now is not great. But the fact that he chooses to only show up in the fourth quarter, to only show up in the second halves of these games for the most part, that is absolutely terrible. And I feel like as a superstar, he's not being held accountable for these situations. To see Steph Curry just float around in these first halves where it's not just the cute off-ball stuff where he's running. He's literally just sitting there, not attacking, not trying to get to the basket, settling for perimeter jump shots, taking lower quality shots, even the open ones he's not making. It's been very bad to see. The Steph slump is not something that I look forward to every Warriors season because it's not great hoops and he just hasn't really been impacting the game like we know him to be capable of. We just haven't seen it. That being said, he's still the best fourth quarter player in basketball. He's been able to impact the game greatly with his shot making. Again, the Detroit game is a great example in the fourth quarter when he made clutch shots to give us the lead to win that game against the Boston Celtics, where he literally checks in the fourth quarter with five points, finishes with 35. Like that's what Steph Curry has been about this entire season. The problem is getting him unlocked early in the game to where, hey, I didn't have it going in the first half. Oh, wait, I can't turn on the, the switch and turn up in the second half. I now have a bad game. We have to eliminate those moments if we're to have any success with this roster. A lot of this season has been disjointed because another pillar of why the Warriors have been bad is actually Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins has been bad at basketball. He went from this guy that we expected to average 16 to 18 points be a play finisher be a efficient enough player he has not been that he's been a catastrophe the minutes with him and kuminga have been bad i'm pretty sure they're like a minus 66 on the season and he's been reverted to the bench because of his poor play and it's to the point where why is he taking minutes away from moses moody if moses moses moody ooh, i feel like kenji perkins and moses moody is literally a better offensive player than him this season it's it's been nasty work I feel bad for Wiggins because he's contributed a lot to our title run, to our success, but he's objectively played the worst basketball of pretty much any starter not named Kevon Looney, and we have to see this change. I think Moody needs to take his spot in the rotation, and Wiggins needs to get his minutes cut even more because the value that he's provided on the court, I'm just not seeing it. Defensively, he doesn't look the same. Offensively, he's more inefficient. There's just a lot of problems because of all the inconsistency and variance we expected to see this season, again, I came in saying they're not a tier one team. No one could have expected Andrew Wiggins to become one of the worst basketball players in the sport at that contract. I just didn't think Andrew Wiggins would be this woefully inefficient of a player, but he is. So things have to change. Again, right now we're 17 and 19. It's kind of funny seeing Lakers fans uh, clown the Warriors when literally every other game we're celebrating who's the 10th seed because we've both been bad so far to start the year. I mean, I'm not happy with it, but I still have confidence in this Golden State team, primarily because 
our schedule gets a lot easier as we get further and further into the new year. As I said earlier, Draymond Green is coming back to the lineup, so that's going to impact things greatly for the Golden State Warriors as well. And I just think that when they get the full picture back when they're all fully healthy, this is going to be a better team. Are they tier one? No, they're still not going to be tier one. There's clear limitations on this roster. I don't think they're good enough to contend for a title considering how things are now. But they will be a better basketball team in the regular season. That That's going to be a thing that happens. People are going to be surprised and be like, are they going on this run? No, they're just better than what they've shown so far. But the ceiling of what they are is still capped without a trade. And I've already said this in, in the past, who I wanted on this team. I wanted Lloyd Marketing, but that's a, a pipe dream at this point. So we just have to see what happens in Golden State in the future. But all in all, I wanted to make this video to start 2024 because this is what i'm seeing on a night to night basis if you want to see my pain of watching these warrior games where Corey joseph is sitting at the top of the key just dribbling dribbling and not doing anything at all of relevance tap into playback playback is a site where you can watch nba games if you have league pass with us and we can live react to the game playback.tv slash gold blooded the link is in the description if you want to tap in for that but yeah that's really it. I just wanted to vent about these things. We have a big stretch coming up. Uh, Draymond should be back versus the Memphis Grizzlies, so that game should be coming pretty soon. But I think we'll be better. It's been bad hoops, but I'm going to stay on business. We've won a lot of games in the past, so people not wanting to step up and consume this basketball now. You can't have the great moments and not live through the bad moments, so I'm here for every single game. Also, content coming back at a premium. I got a new microphone. Let me know how the quality of this is. And yeah, I'll catch you. I don't want to make this too long. Peace.